Bonjour. Welcome to KJ and Tony Move to France. In today's video, we thought we would expand upon last week's video where we shared tips on visiting Paris. And in that video where we shared tips and in other videos that we've done sharing tips about Paris, they're really based upon cultural norms. And so we thought that it might be a good idea to share with you 10 of the common cultural norms in France compared to other countries such as the US. And of course, the 10 cultural norms that we're sharing with you today do not cover all of the cultural norms of France. So if you have other cultural norms after you're done watching this video that you think might be helpful to know, please do share them in the comments below. Are you ready? I'm ready. Okay, let's go. The official motto of France is liberty, equality, and fraternity, which reflects the core values of France. Tip number one has to do with respect for a hierarchy. In the United States, we're much more individualistic than in France, it's much more of a communal thought process. So we look to strive individually, they look to strive as a group, and they like to follow rules in France. Uh, we're not so much rule followers as we are What's the workaround to get to the goal that we're after? Number two, France has an appreciation for tradition. France is known for its rich history regarding art and culture. Many French people take great pride in maintaining their cultural heritage. Number three is a love of food and wine. And French food is world renowned. And wine is an integral part of their culture. And when eating, it's a leisurely pace, and it's really a social event. As far as wine's concerned, culturally, a lot of people drink wine, but rarely do they drink to the point of being drunk. That's frowned upon in France. Number four is the importance of personal style and fashion, mm. which is one of my favorite aspects of France. It's not considered a norm in France. It's a norm in France to dress your best, mm -hmm. right? Their motto is always look your best. So it is not a norm as it is in the U.S. for people to go shopping, even go to restaurants out in their leisure wear mm -hmm. or their athletic wear. You generally will not see this in France, although because of the influx of tourists and so forth, it's becoming more common. But if you're truly French, I believe, if you're mm -hmm. truly French, you are not someone who's going to the grocery store in your leisure wear. They always are, are putting an emphasis on fashion and style. And so scarves are a big, um, a big part mm -hmm. of French fashion, which is why I'm wearing a scarf today, because according to the French, whenever in doubt, throw on a scarf. Number five has to do with formality, etiquette, and being polite. The French are direct people. When they smile, it's because they mean to smile. Where we sometimes just smile as people walk towards us, in France they only smile when they mean it. So it's not rudeness, it's just who they are. It's they say and do what they mean. Which is why, of course, it's really important to say the bonjour when you go into a restaurant or a store or an establishment because they place a very high emphasis on being polite. Even though I've heard some feedback from viewers that they've had not so nice experiences going into stores and not saying bonjour and the response that they received back. But I think that we have to take into consideration the fact that whether you live in France, whether you live in the US, whether you live in Spain, I don't care where you live, people are people and we're mm -hmm. all human and we all have bad days where we're not going to be at our best and we're going to respond in ways that are not necessarily kind or appropriate and that happens everywhere and it happens I think with everyone like every single person if you're being honest with yourself 
can admit to the fact that I can, that I've not always responded at my best. Sure. But if your aim is to stand out, don't say bonjour. It'll, there'll be a flashing light above your head that says, I'm an American. Or Canadian or Australian well, I or don't whatever. Know what, I, I don't know about that. <laughs> yeah. But the fact is, that's what they expect. When I go to a foreign country, France or anywhere else, I want to blend in. Yeah. I don't want to stand out. Right. In, in France, one of the ways you blend in is by saying bonjour when you walk into an establishment. Which is why I'm sure you're watching this video to begin with, because you want to learn those cultural sure. norms so that you can adhere to them. Number six. Number six is further along the lines of how important food is to the culture of France. And that is relative to cheese and the fact that the French are truly obsessed with cheese. And whether you like cheese or you don't like cheese, I think that there's enough cheese in France that you are sure to find at least one type of cheese, mm -hmm. if not two, that are to your liking. Because I'm not sure if you're aware of this. I wasn't aware of this until we looked it up and looked up uh, the research on all of these different cultural norms, is that there are over 1,000 wow. varieties of cheese. Wow in France. That's a lot of cheese. Sure is. Yeah. And I just found out that I can no longer eat cheese. <laughs> really super depressed about that, but I may have to. I've been so good at adhering to that. I may just have to just suffer. I suffer. Know. You know what that means? For the love of the cheese. That means I'm going to suffer. <laughs> Not so much. Number seven has to do with greeting someone when you see them. We don't hug in France. We air kiss, which means we put cheek to cheek, not lips to cheek, but cheek to cheek, and then make the kissing sound or noise or action. Uh, and we do it on both sides. We never kiss on the lips. And depending upon where you live in France, it can be the cheek to cheek, the one cheek or the three times mm -hmm. cheek. Sure. So it's important to just be aware of what you're observing other people are doing and then just follow suit. Number eight has to do with meal times. The French eat typically much later, at least in the US, I'm not really sure how it is in other parts of the world, but definitely in the US, we have a tendency to eat a lot earlier. The French don't start dinner until earliest is 7.30. So you'll find that restaurants won't even open until 7. You won't be able to get a reservation typically earlier than 7.30 p.m. Also, the largest meal of the day is lunch. And a couple of other things relative to dining. We talked about tipping, I think, mm -hmm. in our last we video. Did. We did and received a lot of viewer feedback relative to tipping. One person was actually, which I think they, they had a point, they didn't like the fact that we were suggesting to go ahead and leave 10% because the French don't tip mm -hmm. in France. The tip is included in their wage. It's actually included in the bill. It's not like in the U.S. where you see the charge mm -hmm. on the bill, it's just built into the prices on the menu. So this person had a good point because they were like, listen, <laughs> this is the way that it's done in France. And I think in some touristy areas, some of the wait staff are getting used to the fact mm -hmm. that Americans do tip. And so, of course, you start to then train them to expect that. And so... I think that that was a good point sure. and that you do not have to leave a tip when you're dining in France. Is it nice if you've received exceptional service to leave a few euros? Yes, but it's not something that is required or even expected. And then one other thing that I found interesting is that they don't really do doggy bags. Like right. doggy bags are not a thing in France and this is because People only order 
enough to what they're going to eat. In the U.S., this is especially true, and, and it's especially true of us, <laughs> you more so than me, but that we tend to over-order, right? We order, we have big meals, we sure. have, there are some restaurants you go to where the portions are, are, are huge. Well, that's a point I want to make. The portions in France are, are much smaller. So, therefore, when, you, when you're eating, you're much more likely to not have anything left over to put in the doggy bag to begin with. So it's, it's more about uh, order what you want and eat it and not have leftovers. And they, they even shop, which I mentioned last time, they even shop daily and only mm -hmm. purchase enough of what they need to eat for that day. Because you'll also notice, if you've been to France, that there are very, the refrigerators, you're, you typically aren't going to find this big, huge refrigerator right. in, in someone's apartment. They, they typically have smaller refrigerators, and that's because they don't need the space. They're not storing all of this food in the refrigerator. So that's why doggy bags aren't quite a thing in France. And as far as the over-ordering is concerned, we had the experience in Paris where we were ordering food at a cafe and the waiter, I think this has happened twice. Yes, it has happened twice. <laughs> twice. I wonder why I look like this. <laughs> it's happened twice where a waiter has said to us, no, 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 <laughs> no, 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 you don't want to be ordering that. And the first time it happened, I was really shocked. I was like, yeah. The wait, wait, the waiter is telling us that we can't order. And that like, was actually, well, we that was actually our first trip to Paris. <laughs> yeah. But it just happened in Nice when yeah, we were there nice. this summer yeah. where we were going to order paella, I think it was. Mm -hmm. And he wouldn't let us order a Something meal else. each. We had yeah. to share the paella. And he was right. Well, it wasn't that we were going to order like two paellas, but right. I was going to have like mussels or something separate, some sort of separate right. meal. And he, he said no. He said, no, it's way too much food. So we were like, okay. We'll have, and he was right. He was yeah. absolutely 100% right. I don't right. think we finished the paella. Yeah. Right. Number nine has to do with conversation. The French don't like idle chit-chat, but they do like to debate current events, uh, topics that have to do with society, those kinds of things. They like to talk back and forth and hear other people's point of view. And they actually spend an evening over dinner doing that. So there's a lot of banter going back and forth, but it's more meaningful, it's more thought out. It's not just chit chat. And the only thing is, is you, you should uh, not get loud if you disagree with the person you're talking to and try not to contradict them if you can avoid it. What do you mean by contradictions? Because in debating, aren't you like, contradicting the other person's Yes, opinion. you are, but I mean where you get frustrated and just say, nah, you're wrong, or mm -hmm. what do you know, or mm -hmm. something derogatory of that nature. Right. So you're making your argument. You're not just saying, oh, you're wrong. Right. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Okay. Got it. And finally, number 10 is that the French are very private people, which is why I think it's very challenging for people who move to France mm -hmm. to integrate into the culture because they are very private. But some things to keep in mind if you're interacting with French people is to make sure that you don't bring up age, income, even marital status, even asking a French person what they did over the weekend can be considered invasive and rude. And of course, we're talking about someone you don't know that well, sure. because obviously, when you know someone well, the the norms change. When right. you, which I think is really interesting in France, because this is this is represented in their language. Even like in learning the language, I'm noticing that there's a lot of different ways of saying things based upon whether you know the person and you're familiar with them and you're friends with them or their family or they're not, mm -hmm. they're just acquaintances or someone you're meeting for the first time. Like, for example, you use the word vu for you in a formal context, but if it's informal and it's friends or family, you use the word too. 
And I just discovered, this is fascinating because it's, I just discovered it. So it's like, ooh, this like secret, I feel like. I just discovered that when you say we for yes, mm -hmm. right? When you say we, if you're friends or family, they don't say we. You want to know what they say? Oh. They say we. Oh. Okay. So it's just an informal way of saying we. They say we. Okay. I thought well, that was interesting. The, the thing, though, about this particular tip that I think is important is it's easy as Americans to think of them, French people, being rude. When they're not being rude, it's just who they are. They're private people. Mm -hmm. And so when they're not as open as maybe we are, uh, they like to keep some, some things about themselves to themselves until they know you better. Yeah. That's it for today's video. We hope that you enjoyed the information that we provided and it helps you in your travels to Paris or any other part of France. And before we wrap up for today, I would just like to express some gratitude and say thank you from the bottom of our hearts to all of our patrons supporting our channel. We appreciate you all so much. I'd like to give a special shout out to one of our patrons, Sharon, for all of your recent support of our channel. We appreciate you and we appreciate all of our patrons. Thank you so much. And if you are not a patron of our channel and you are interested in becoming one of our patrons, there's a link in the description. And one of the benefits of becoming a patron of our channel is that during our trip in October and all of our trips to France, you are provided with access to daily videos while we are in France. And also you get previews of all of our upcoming videos before they are officially launched on YouTube. Again, to get more information on how you can become a patron, click the link in the description. Until next time, a bientôt. Au revoir.